just minding my own business, half asleep at the tiller, when BAM! Robbie's getting all excited about something on the line. Woo! We were almost at Puerto Angel, the very last corner before the Tuanapec and the southern border of Mexico. Woo, look at him jump. So very big. Uh, Woo! Yeah, that's it, jump baby, jump! Woo! Tired from the passage and knowing that we would probably have some smaller fish aboard soon, I really didn't want to drag in a giant sailfish. It's like around his nose. Yeah. Besides that, larger fish are generally less healthy to eat, and they're usually bigger breeders. Sailfish and swordfish have been known to impale their fishermen. I decided to cut the line as closely as I dared. We hadn't even pulled up the second line yet, and he was already caught on that one now. Oh, I'm stuck in the other f***ing line. Robbie declared the fish a goner. He lassoed him into place so that we wouldn't be staring the fish in the beak when we hoisted him in. This sailfish was large enough that it made sense for us to use a halyard and a winch to hoist it up like a sail. Robbie was happy to get both lures back. You know, you see there? That thing knot around its bill. We tried cutting the line on this bad boy and he went and knotted himself on the other line. And we were back to smooth sailing all the way to the harbor entrance. Looking for the shabbiest fishing boat we could find, Robbie offered the giant fish up to some pescadores in a tippy looking canoe. Muy bueno, eh? Ese es... Nosotros vimos dos, pero no nos quiso agarrar con... Sí, ne vi mucho, ne vi... Ne... Hay mucho bullado, ¿no? They were certainly happy to take it off our hands, and they even offered us a smaller fish for our dinner as a trade. Last video, we made our way from Zihuataneo with dolphins on our tail to Acapulco, where we enjoyed the golden fruits of that big city. After another two-night passage, we were now in Puerto Angel, which is a peaceful place with friendly folks and a simple check-in with the harbor master. I didn't want to get myself a panga. This place was just the right size for taking a stroll without ever really losing sight of the boat at anchor, but with enough little shops that we managed to find a thrift store that had some second-hand shorts for Robbie. The weather was good, so we hauled up anchor as usual. Without a boatyard here, we wouldn't be able to stay. We were on the hunt for a place to hand off Rosa. So we said goodbye to the fishermen, and I jumped off the stern to say hello to some dolphins. The bait fish that they were chasing just moments before were all I could see. That plastic stuff is shining all over the place. Robbie fretted about the forward sail that was coming apart, and we dwelled on the upcoming passage across the Tuanapec. The man who raised Robbie took the same journey on his boat some decades ago and described 40-foot waves as one of the scariest passages he'd ever had on a boat. So what's the game pack for Tuanapec? The Tuanapec itself, the area that can be affected by the strong winds and waves, is actually a fairly short... How, how many miles do you think it is? Like, 16 less, 16. 40 miles, 60 to 80 miles. Yeah, maybe 60 to 80 miles that look like it can be affecting. Just like have one arm on the shore as we pass through. No, Robbie doesn't like that. What? Robbie doesn't like the, the, uh, the fact that I read something about safety and passing through the Monotech area. I don't trust guidebooks. So far, the guidebook is right about everything. It has 
the only thing the guidebook is wrong about is prices. Everything, everywhere you go, if the guidebook says it's 20 pesos, it means it's 40 pesos. If the guidebook says it's 100, it's 200. Everything has doubled. It's kind of like a, um, a quantum mechanic situation where because the guidebook has observed something, it has changed. As we approached our anchorage, we hooked a glimmering yellowfin tuna. Ravi carved up some beautiful medallion pieces for searing. There's some pieces here. To top it all off, some creamy, limey, whiny sauce. We arrived in Huatulco, a series of small bays leading up to the indentation of the Tuantepec. The most protected at this time seemed to be Bahia de Santa Cruz, which has a mooring basin for pangas only and leads into the town of La Crucecita. The entrance to the cruiser's marina is just a short distance from where we anchored, and in between is one of the many great looking beaches that make up this area's coastline. We would eventually be going to that marina, as you'll see. What do you think of Huatulco, uh, La Cruz, or Santa Cruz Harbor? The location is actually beautiful, the fishing is excellent, the authorities have been a little... Yeah, the... Uh, no comment. We were not allowed to pay for and take the available water at Bahia de Santa Cruz, although they wanted to charge us almost $10 a day just to be anchored there. It seemed like there was a push to send us cruisers into the marina, even though, like many long-term cruisers, we prefer to be on the hook. We considered the boatyard there for hauling out Rosa, but the cost was too high compared to the marina the next state over. The chula strips drying in the sun since Acapulco were ready for jarring with oil. Like this, it can be stored for a very long time. The Huatulco area had quite a bit of common damselfish, shy pufferfish, surgeonfish, and the usual small jacks, and unfortunately some reef crushed by anchors as well. But close to land all along the shoreline here, we caught a fair-sized fish almost daily, so we were well fed. I even picked up a free hat on the bottom. All this life, right alongside a cruise ship terminal. Sometimes I'm just minding my own business, uh, working on some movies, whatever, and Robbie just comes and shoves a really beautiful plate of food in my face, something outrageously appetizing. In this case, some really nice beer-battered, uh, freshly caught amberjack from the back of our boat. Good, I can't pass up sharing that with everyone. Pufferfish are decidedly the goofiest of fish. All it takes is a handful of sand scooped up from the bottom, and they come running, looking for particles to eat. Another pastime we partook in was meeting up with fellow cruisers for land picnics with our friends from Adventure and My Tent. Is this a restaurant or, or what? What is Where this? It is now. It is now. Well, we're turning it in this it evening. <laughs> we're turning it into a gorilla, one of those gorilla restaurants, pop-up restaurant. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna leave it. With camera equipment rolling, we risked causing an optical feedback loop. Ah, it's just gonna go on forever. Our friends on my ten generously booked us into the marina slip again to make sure that we could fill our tanks with water. And visiting the nearby beach became the necessary daily routine as we all sweated away cooking and cleaning in our hot boats. Everybody's here to enjoy themselves and you're just 
taking it too seriously. It's great. I love the drainage ditch. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on trying to salvage one of our two flexible water tanks. A bicycle tube patch and Sikaflex had been good for a little while, but the tank was leaking from the same hole again. Put a plastic bag with some uh, um, elastics and it seems to be holding the water in. I just quickly jerry-rigged it to see if the computer and that works without having an extra power cable to power this one. And it's powering up so now I can switch it off. And both the screen and the brain are working, basically. The display and the brain. Meanwhile, Robbie did his best to install the autopilot computer given to us by our friends on Catamaran Tribe. You can get it to go on standby, but not on autopilot. More or less, yeah. Today I put it back, I put it on. I installed it right where it's supposed to be, and of course, they decided not to work on me. So, did you unhook anything from yesterday to today? Uh, he increased the length of the cable of that one. Of the auto of the arm. Of the arm, maybe. Uh. The pressure is killing me. <laughs> yeah, it's like nobody breathe. Uh. I'm waiting for it to go. Dee, dee. Uh, you had it hooked up yesterday for like sitting there for how long? Quite a while, it worked. Like an hour? Like 15 minutes or what? Yeah, I had 15 minutes, I had it going. Z -z 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 -z. We resigned ourselves back to the state of being autopilotless and explored the surrounding bahias. With this particular daily catch, Robbie decided to try something special. Going to first cut the shrimp. The most outrageous thing we'd ordered in Mexico so far was the Royo de Ma and he intended to recreate the recipe with a personal sailor's touch. Lime juice. Kind of dry this lime. And of course, a pinch of curry powder and his favorite hot sauce to marinate the shrimp. The main thing we observed about these royos de mar is uh, that they're really fattening. What do they have to have? They have to have butter, bacon, and bacon, cream. and cream, cream, oil. Basically, they're not they're not rolls of the sea. They're rolls of every animal. You need every animal inside. That's what, that's what Robbie seems to have observed about them. And not only the animal proteins, but the nutty ones as well. As if things weren't heavy enough, he boiled up some potatoes to mash on the side. Some more crushed garlic, chopped onions, and butter in the pan. Almonds. And so-called no-fat cream. That looks like it has some grass in it. See, it's some grass on the packet. A little bit of greens just for color, and it was time to get rolling the actual royo with bacon and I'm not going to partake in the baconness. That's just for you, Robbie. Melting the stringy cheese in the center would act as an indicator that the roll was cooking through. That's a roll. Mm -hmm. You're on a roll. This would be like the bomb in the oven. 
This would be the bomb in the solar cooker. The entire thing was in danger of exploding apart, so we stuck it through with some sticks. Smells like a good old American breakfast. Sizzling and sputtering and sending forth greasy juices. What's that, Ravi? It's not a roll de mar, it's a bazooka de mar. Amazing. The meaty monstrosity cooked all the way through to the center. She's is not a yeah, baby. Mashed potato. Mm. I think we're going better with rice. Yeah, this is too heavy. I think you're right. This scary creation could barely support its own weight. A cruise ship contemplated coming in for a landing. The waterfront was awash with tourists for several hours, and panga traffic picked up. You smell that? French fries, shrimp, definitely fried shrimp, and maybe a whiff of like fried chicken, like... Yeah, fried chicken for sure. Yeah, for sure. We hadn't gotten our laundry done in about a month. We were doing it by hand a little bit on the deck with very minute amounts of water. But yes, it's very, it's very different to have your laundry done for you. There's an aspect of luxury to this, uh, other than the fact that we walk a mile down a really, really hot, but nice walkway here to the little town center. Jeff and Brenda had some top secret info about a festival going down in the mountains. So we shared a taxi and tagged along. What is, what is the style called? Rancheras. Rancheras. Yeah. Ah, I could finally give a name to the musical style that we hear so often everywhere. We're really going inland. We're going into the realm of the land lovers. Uh, yeah, I know. It's kind of feeling weird. I'm already missing the sea. The air smells funny. We traveled upwards until the air temperature dropped out of the usual 30s into the refreshing 20s. And then we started trekking through the small hilltop town of Pluma Hidalgo. Today was supposedly a coffee festival. Ravi, you wanna try? But we ended up tasting a lot of wine and mezcal. It was breathtaking to be up on a mountainside in the state of Oaxaca. All around us, farmers were cultivating coffee, chocolate, and we even heard rumors of cannabis and mushrooms. Today there would be a parade through the winding streets. We searched the town with the help of our taxi driver to find the starting line. First, we had to grab some lunch and taste the local treats. So let's try to say this together all now. Guabana. Guanabana. 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 <laughs> we found the root of the parade, and honestly, I got a real kick out of the kids on stilts. Kids on stilts are a real fashion here, and they were really good at keeping their balance. People with and without traditional dress were dancing in the streets. Just excellent. Birds making nests in our boat is so sweet. Sorry birds. It's not a good spot. There's masts and booms on every other boat. <laughs> There's no birds inside of it. I like the angle. I like that it's like it's it's very like rain protected.
the time had come. A glassy calm overcame the marina entrance. See you on the other side! The weather window for crossing the Tuvanapec was here. 